What is up, wizards? Hey, it's me, Mooner. Uh, I'm, I've got a triple header for you guys today. So this is going to be, uh, I got three matches of Kano Mirrors. If you, you know, got the cojones to stick around and watch them. Um, let me explain a little bit why I'm doing this is because I, I definitely am in the camp that Kano is in the top five meta decks right now. I think he is uh, got a really good shot. You know, you have a, if you're a good Kano pilot, I feel like you got a really good shot against the the Wizards. I mean, the Warriors, the Guardians, and the Brutes. Uh, especially the Guardians. Uh, those are pretty much super easy matchups. But uh, I do think that you are going to see a pretty big uh, surge of Kanos. Like normally if you would go to a big event like a Battle Hardened or a Calling or something, there might be like, you know, three to five, six Kano players there. Um, <clears throat> all confident on the hero. But I do feel like since he is in the, <clears throat> you know, in the A to S tier, um, depending on the pilot, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more Kanos show up to these events. People who think they know how to play the deck. And subsequently, you are going to run into the ever-elusive Kano Mirror. Uh, before, you really had no shot of hitting the Kano Mirror. Um, just, you know, by <clears throat> sheer percentages of the Kano representation. But I do think that's going to change and shift a little bit. I think a lot of people are going to jump on this hero and attempt to play him. So I figured uh, I would give you guys some, you know, uh, match advice how to play the Kano Mirror. So we got game one right here. <clears throat> you know, if you want to stick around. Uh, some people are adamant that you need to pitch stack this. Uh, but I, I don't really think it's, I mean, it helps. You should probably start setting up a pitch stack. But I think you're just going to get a lot more equity out of uh, banking your alluvian counters and just uh, asserting yourself as the beatdown uh, pretty much immediately. And one of the ways we do that is we go second, if at all possible. I know a lot of Kano players who think that the right thing to do is to go first in the matchup, but uh, I choose, I think, that it's correct to go second. We are also wearing Alluvian Cancellus and Waning Moon. So we want to bank those Alluvian counters as soon as possible. So going second definitely helps with that. Anyways, let's get into the match. Uh, this is game one. And they're basically just going to fish for some good stuff. Uh, cycle their hand a little bit. And look for some to uh, tomes or potions. That is one of the most important things about this matchup is getting as many potions out as possible. Um, potion of Deja Vu and Energy Potion, you want to see as many as possible. So uh, as they pass priority, I'm also going to pass, uh, you know, try to get the last couple cards out of their hand so they don't have an arsenal. So I'm going to shoot them with a Lessons. It's a, only coming in for three, but... They do have to pitch the rest of their hand to prevent it from hitting. So, they, you know, I robbed them of uh, probably arsenaling a Sonic Boom. And I keep the uh, Aether Spindle. So, obviously, I want to play this potion out as soon as possible. Uh, that's the first thing you should be doing every turn. If you have a potion, is playing the potion. And then fish for something on top. I got an Aether Arc. They don't know what the rest of my hand looks like, so... Uh, they are inclined to block it because that ponder token, it's not, it's not nothing. Like sometimes, you know, running 33 blues, you have a good chance of hitting a blue, but you know, there's also the chance of hitting a red. So, uh, they, they're setting up a pitch stack right now. They've got a lot of good cards on the bottom of their deck, including a wildfire underneath, um, some sonic booms. So they play the potion of their own and decide to just pass the turn. And it's time for me to also start setting up my pitch stack. Um, 
as well with uh, also sending a sonic boom so I see another potion and I definitely want to play it and then I get to arsenal this wildfire and that's probably where it's gonna stay I know a lot of people think that wildfire is not the way to go in this matchup but I assure you it is you're probably gonna need two so they got two potions out already I got two potions out they're gonna just swing waning moon um, and I have no Luvian encounters yet, so I do want to block some of this. Uh, we're going to hit them with an Aether Flare. This is a must block. Which they do, and I'm going to... I'm considering just passing my turn. Uh, but if I can sneak in a little bit more damage or find another potion, that would be awesome. And I had a resource floating, so I had three resources at my disposal if they chose to go off with a three card hand and two potions out. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be too shocked about that, but here they come in with a nourishing emptiness and, um, I'm going to pause it right here. They do have two potions out. So, I only have one. So, uh, having a wildfire in Arsenal, um, I don't have enough resources to, or I don't have enough counters on my Alluvian to, to guarantee, you know, Waning Moon uh, and that. So, it's, it's not a good idea to go off here yet. So, I'm probably just going to block a little bit of this and hope they draw a bunch of reds. I can't block the whole thing out, obviously. Uh, Nourishing Emptiness is a very important and crucial card in this matchup. Uh, Kano with a six card, ha six card hand um, is really, really scary. So let's just, uh, you know, fish for, fish for some reds. And I find two pretty shitty reds. Or yeah, yeah, I blues. I'm sorry. Um, so we're we're just gonna hit him with uh, one arcane, and then hit him with the the uh, arc. Uh, I do get a ponder, which I already have an arsenal, so I don't care. Uh, I am going to play the uh, gaze of the ages. See what's on top. Uh, bottom of them both. Uh, remember, I am trying to pitch stack this matchup as well. I draw into a Tome of the Aetherwind. We'll draw a card twice. Uh, I draw, a, you know, a Lessons and another Spindle, which is pretty shitty. So I'm just going to send Waning Moon and hope I don't die. And they chose to do nothing. And my Ponder, so... I've got three reds and a yellow in hand, so this is actually pretty scary. Uh, going up against a Kano with six card hands, uh, two potions out, and I've got three reds and a, and a yellow in my hand. So I'm not too happy about that. So I'm I'm looking to just kind of eat as much damage as they throw at me. Uh, with, well, I'll block the arc because uh, I I probably shouldn't have done that, but. They're playing Oasis for Spite. That's definitely noteworthy. Um, I don't play Oasis in my in my list, but it's, it's I mean it's good against Kano, so why not? Uh, if it works for them, it works for them. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go naked here again. Uh, they have a full grip, uh, and I'm at. 23 life which is definitely killable with especially uh, with two potions out um, hopefully they just haven't found their combo pieces yet because I am in the danger zone I'm taking a big risk but I didn't want to pass my turnover with a red and a yellow in hand so I'm going to try to sneak in as a little bit of damage and they do take some damage here. Uh, they pitch two cards into it. Uh, a Swell Tidings is noteworthy. 
they play out their own potion of deja vu here on their turn and then they activate alluvian and decide to hit me for two which i don't block so we're gonna just fish for some reds on top gives the ages a good hit uh let's see what else we can find and an Aether Spindle. So yeah, I'm going to play the Aether Spindle. Which is going to force some cards out of their hand. Uh, let's bottom that. Play Gaze. Uh, and I see uh, another Wildfire and a Blazing. So we're going to... Just hit him with the wildfire for four. Uh, I've decided that I, I am the beatdown, so I'm not going to uh, attempt to, I'm not trying to get the second cycle. I'm trying to put as much pressure on them as possible. And four damage is four damage. And I, I do have, I will draw into a blazing, so if they decide to drop all their cards. They play a tone from Arsenal, which is good. Gain three life, draw two cards. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. And let's see what they hit on top. They hit another, they hit a blue on top, which, um, yeah, I'm gonna ditch this blazing, put it to the bottom and uh, Block it out. Get my counters. So play my second tome. Or I mean second potion here. Uh, fish for something on top, which is a uh, swell tidings. Um, you know, having two potions out makes me feel a lot more comfortable while going, dropping all the cards out of my hand. I still have a resource floating. Uh, they take a little bit of damage. Um, and I'm gonna hit them with Waning Moon too. Just try to even those life totals up a little bit. And I got them down to 18. I find my own Nourishing. And they start off with a uh, Sonic Boom, which obviously I'm gonna block. And they activate the Reluvian and hit me with Waning Moon for two, which I'm not going to block because and snapback. They are playing snapback. I'm not playing snapback, but snapback is one hell of a good card in the mirror. Then they've got me down to 14. But I'm going to drop this nourishing with two resources floating. Uh, so I've got six resources if I need to prevent anything. And they block three of it, which is expected. And they Oasis Respite the other one. So Oasis Respite costing them a resource. Uh, you know, I'm not mad about that. I got them down to one card in hand. But uh, they have another Tome in Arsenal. So they're going to draw some cards. And I'm just thinking if this is a good time to go off. Because I've got uh, Illumian Encounters. I've got two Potions. I've got it, you know, and I decide against it. They do have, you know, enough resources to make that uncomfortable, especially if they are holding a blue. So we're just going to see what they decide to do here. Uh, fishing for something on top. They find another tome. Uh, that's exactly what you want to see. They go to four cards in hand. And they hit me with another snapback. Which I'm going to block. I don't want to go too low here. And an Aether Dart for one. Which I decide to block because I just want to play out this Tome. And no, I'm not going to. Alright, play out this... Uh, Energy potion, sorry. So 
I'm up to three E pots here. And I just pass my turn over. So here I draw into three more blues, one of them being I have Aphidia. And I've got to think real hard about this because I've got a lot of resources in my hand, and one of those cards being I have Aphidia. Um, so I decide to take all this damage and go down to seven. And that's a pretty scary place to be against the Kano. And I'm thinking about it right now. Let's just uh, Kano using the eye. And we see a wildfire on top. So it's time to double wildfire them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to banish the wildfire. I'm sure they're going to pump their resources out. Yes, we want to Metacarpus it. It's coming in for five, um, which they take one damage from that. Uh, while their Waning Moon is on the stack, I'm also going to crack my potions. Um, use my boots. And pray that I can make it to 17. So we got another wildfire coming in. This is going to come in for five. Uh, they break their potion. Uh, get some more resources. So I take them down to 14. So this prognosticate is going to come in for uh, six damage, I believe. Tome. Tome is a great thing to see on top. Um, I've got him down to 9. So I just need to hit him with Alluvian and find one more spell. Uh, draw into one more spell, hopefully. Hit him with my Waning Moon, get him down to 6. Break my last potion. Draw into that tome. Volcano into the tome. Uh, hopefully draw, you know, see something on top of it. You know, tome of Fendel, obviously, yes. So, so hopefully draw into something I can eat the rags or just more resources to uh, break my potion of deja vu. So. I know exactly what I'm going to draw into. It's going to be two blues. Uh, one of them being I. And then I'm able to shoot back uh, two zero cost. Or, uh, so I know exactly what I'm going to Kano into. It's going to be a Scalding Rain, which is going to come in for six. I don't even need the Metacarpus it. And that's GG's right there. All right, all right, Wizards. Uh, if you uh, are tuning in from the last matchup, this is round two uh, of my Kano Mirror uh, triple header. Here you get a little bit of insight into how I sideboard into this matchup. Uh, I just bring in Nourishing and three tomes of Fendal. Uh, yeah, let's just get into the matchup here. I think I got to go first, or I mean, uh, choose, and I chose to go second. Like I said before, I think going second is always correct in the Kano Mirror. Uh, the only reason you would want to go first is just potion equity, being able to play out potions. Um, but you're really just trying to get Alluvian encounters if you can. A Kano into 
something they don't want to see, so they just decide to pass turn. And I'm totally fine with that, because I've got an Aether Flare and three blues. So let's just start off by forcing some cards out of their hand. Like I said, going second, you get to control the tempo of the game a little bit more. Uh, hit an E-Pot, which is absolutely lovely. And hit Eye of the Fidia, which I'd rather hit it now than... They're going to Kano while I have no resources out and try to get a little bit of chip damage in themselves. They are losing a card uh, from hand, and I guess they don't see what they want to see. So they block one of it. Uh, they're starting to set up their pitch stack with blazing. And I draw into, honestly, an amazing hand here. Getting to throw nourishing using I feels pretty damn good. And I see a sonic boom and a blue flare on top, so we're gonna bottom the flare. Keep the sonic boom on top. So we're gonna throw nourishing at them and then Kano into the Sonic Boom. Which is hopefully gonna force two cards out of their hand. They don't. They decide to take all six of this. Go down to 23. And which makes me nervous. Uh, they've still got a five card hand, but they only have one counter on Illuvian, so I have got my pants down right now. I've got no cards in hand, but I do have an E pot if I, you know, absolutely need to stay alive. And they decide to block it using their own eye, which is pretty damn good. I have a Fidia is absolutely busted. It's a broken fucking card. Um, specifically in Kano, if you uh, aren't running I, 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 I'm sorry, but I definitely think that it's absolutely necessary uh, to play Kano at uh, the highest levels. Uh, you just need to... It, I is pretty cheap right now, so I, I would pick one up. Um, but... In the hands of Kano and a good Kano pilot, I is absolutely broken. So I'm just waiting for them to see what they see on top. And then possibly, yep, they just pass turn, which is fine. And I draw into a whole bunch of shit. Uh, but I do have a wildfire and a tome and a swell tidings. So, and I've got... You know, two blues. Uh, they are playing the red Aether um, Quickenings, which I don't have in my list, but I, I kind of wish I did because it's a great card in the mirror. You know, pitch a blue, and then you get two resources left to Waning Moon. So, you know, one blue for six damage is pretty damn good. But I am just going to block it, get my first Alluvian counter. And they're gonna end their turn. And I'm gonna throw this uh, naked wildfire at them. Because I wanna put this tome in arsenal and gain a little bit more life. Even though I am at, at significantly higher life total than they are.
I want to keep my life total as healthy as possible and as high as possible. And they decide to pitch a tome and an e-pot, which I think is a big mistake. I think they should be playing that e-pot. Uh, you know, this game is all about uh, incremental value and an energy potion is one of the strongest cards in the deck other than Eye of Aphidia. So um, playing out those e-pots is, is pretty important. And then this is just, you know, a Lessons in Lava, which I'm not inclined to block because if they're trying to set up a pitch stack, they're, I don't know if they should be searching. And it's just three damage. Um, and they fish out of Gaze the Ages, which is really funny. Uh, they didn't have any resources to play it, but I'm going to go ahead and gain five life. Um, and draw into some more blues and a Sonic Boom, which I can't play the Sonic Boom yet, but I can Lessons in Lava, which they should know to block because I still have this full grip of cards. Uh, and they block with another potion. Well, they pitch another potion. Um, they need to be playing these potions out. And I think this is where they are losing in the game. I draw into another tome. Or Kano into another tome of Fendal. Um, which draws me two more blues. Which, this is a fucking lot of blues on top of my deck. I'd love to see some reds. So we see an Aether Flare. So let's force another card out of their hand. Uh, another Lessons in Lava. So we're going to force another card out of their hand, hopefully. Because I'm not worried about my pitch stack. Uh, I will search out. Like a tome or something and just keep drawing cards. But I think they I get every card out of their hand. Then I can hit them for uh, hit them with a sap for one. Unfortunately, I can't pump it and get those alluvian counters down a little bit. Um, I end my turn here. So that was a whole lot of cards to just deal one damage. But I was able to get stripped their whole hand. Uh, so, you know, definitely asserting myself as the beatdown. Then I draw into three reds and a potion. So I'm going to Sonic Boom here uh, because I don't want to play out that potion and then give away the fact that I only have reds in my hand. But we do get to Arsenal a Wildfire and play the potion on our next turn drawn to a uh, pretty shitty hand here I wish it was more blues but they do play a tome of their own uh, and they currently have four counters on Alluvian so I should expect some damage uh, I am at 32 I do have a nice healthy life total where I can start using that uh, kind of as my, as a resource. Um, they're going to hit me with a sap. Which I'm not too worried about. But I will pitch away this yellow and prevent the damage. Keep my life total high. Uh, prevent one of this waning moon damage. And then my next turn is going to be play out this potion and throw Waning Moon, uh, keeping two resources floating. Get rid of this uh, spindle and and they decide to block a little bit in it. I've got a lot of resources. They're gonna Kano which I think is a bad move here. Um, they do hit a flare. I can block two of it. 
which I could block it all, but I'm not giving up my potions yet. So, I, I am in a much better state than they are. I've got two potions. And I'm going to take three of this damage. So, you know, they are trying to close the life gap a little bit here. But, going down the two cards in hand. And, they end their turn. And so, hey, I'm going to pause it for just a second because... Um, you know, two potions out, uh, a wildfire in arsenal and a wildfire in hand. You know, I have access to 11 resources plus, uh, alluvian counters. So waning moon is free. So there is a argument to possibly go off here and double wildfire them. But I definitely choose against that. I, I decide to like just play it a little bit more cautiously. And I, I do think about it for a while. But I instead... Um, I decide against it. So I decide to just naked wildfire them. I say naked because it, you know, doesn't... It's just four damage. And they prevent three of it. So I'm going to throw a Waning Moon. They block it. So that makes me a lot more comfortable to go down to zero cards in hand. And I get another potion out of the out of the deal here so potion of deja vu i'm only running one in the deck um, i know a lot of people are on two potion is an insanely strong card of deja vu but i just draw into a three red and sonic boom hand so i decide to just hit him with a swell tidings uh, they don't know that my last card is a red so they kind of uh, side against they have two resources floating so I'm not going to waning moon give, give away the fact that you know I have so we see our a third potion we're going to play that immediately and then we're going to Kano to a scalding rain so yeah, I'll play that with my last resource floating. And then pass priority, end my turn. So I feel pretty good. I draw into uh, two more reds and a blue. I'm not too thrilled about that. But I'm definitely going to send one of these blazings to the bottom. Uh, so we'll hit him with a spindle. Keep two resources floating. They can't o or they hit I. Well, that's, a, I guess, a good thing about searching is you shuffle that I back in. And it's no longer at the bottom. So seeing I twice in a game feels pretty good. So you know, I'm, if if I was on the if I, on their side, I I would definitely be setting up a pitch stack, but they didn't. Um, and they obviously vanished into a tome. Kano again into a wildfire. So here's a moment here where I have three potions out. Uh, they draw some cards and they're going to hit me with a wildfire. And if I, I'm going to pause it because if I decided to take all of the 
damage, which is what I should have done. I could definitely win the game from here um, because Wildfire is uh, asymmetrical. So it affects my spells as well as their spells um, if they play it on their turn. So I could take this damage pretty comfortably and then throw back my own wildfire which would come in for 10 uh and then i can hit him with alluvian uh waning moon and then finish them off with a blazing so it's kind of a fuck up on my part i should know better but i could have won this game right here and there because they are going to Hit me with a wildfire and if i just took all 10 of that damage i could throw back a wildfire for 10 of all five of that damage i could throw back a wildfire of my own and close out this game but they are canoing again And they Kano into a spindle. And they drop their pants with no cards in hand. So I'm not going to block this spindle. They get to definitely see a lot of their deck. But they don't have any more resources. So it really doesn't matter. Um, I should have just taken all the damage from the Wadfire. And then, you know, I have three potions out, as well as a Wildfire and Arsenal and a Blazing Aether. So I definitely could have ended that game right then and there. There's no way that I can die here. But that was definitely a misplay on my part. I chose to play a lot more uh, defensively instead of aggressively when I could have just taken that wildfire and ended the game. And I kind of pay the price for it by drawing into, you know, another red and a tome. But I'm going to just finish them off right here with a wildfire pump it uh, rags into my blazing on top crack some potions I just need one spell So it doesn't matter what I hit off the top. Lessons in Lava. Yeah, that's perfect. That's enough damage right there. And then I do a goofy ass thing here, which is search for another Blazing when I already have one banished. Uh, And that's more than enough damage. So yeah, that was uh, game two. Thanks for watching. And uh, stay tuned for game three. What's up, Wizards? If you have stuck around for this long for game three, you are a mega Chad. And I really appreciate you. Uh, so much love. Um, but this game has already gotten started. So... Let's get into it. Um, my opponent is going first, which I think is a mistake. Um, they chose to go first, so I'm still a believer in going second in this matchup, always. Uh, we play Alluvian and Waning Moon. But they banish into a Lessons in Lava, which they're going to play. 
and I'm going to put these two tomes to the bottom so just in case um, just in case we need to pitch stack this matchup I've got two tomes and a blue so and I start the game off with the Luvian counter and we draw into our first potion, which we are going to play immediately because potions are one of the most important aspects of this mirror. And then I'm going to play uh, Ikeno into an Aether Flare. So we get to definitely draw some cards out of their hand. And I don't want this in my arsenal, so I'm gonna, I have two resources floating. So I'm going to Kano, Ikeno into a Tome. Draw two more cards, possibly an arsenal target, which I do. And then we're just gonna waning moon, pitching away this lessons. I prioritize the spindle over the lessons, obviously. It's just a, it's just more damage. That's the only reason. And they play a red aether dart so three damage coming in uh, I'll prevent it get my second alluvian counter um, then I'll play a spindle see if they want to block all four of it and then I have a blazing as an arsenal target something they definitely should consider blocking all of. So it's gonna take two cards out of their hand, hopefully. Which it does. And we're going to Kano again. See if we can't find some goodies. We get a gaze, which is pretty dope. Um, And Volcano into We have one resource to play the card as well But They're just kind of uh, Piddling around waiting for I'm just waiting for them to pass priority So I can possibly either get a damage in with the chain lightning or they, they block it all and get another card out of their hand. Which I which they do. So they go down to one card and I get the arsenal a blazing. So I've established uh, myself as the beatdown currently. And uh I, I think here for a hot minute, if I have enough resources and damage to fight through one blue, which I'm doing math in my head. That's why it's taking me so long to pass priority. And they're at 29, so can I break through if they've got the blue? I'm going to find out. See what I can Kano into. an Aether Flare. So we're going to play the Aether Flare. Force that last card out of hand. Oh, I'm going to Metacarpus it. So I'm going off here. So they take a damage from that. Uh, I'm going to Kano rags into the... Uh, and I draw a red, which is super sad. Uh, but I'm going to put the <clears throat> lessons on top. I mean, the Aether Wildfire on top. I'm going to break my potion. Uh, I'm going to hit him with three damage first. So 
So this is a uh, super super sketch, and uh, I probably shouldn't have done this, but you know, there's no going back now. So I'm gonna hit him with three more arcane. So I've dealt a total of four so far. Uh, Wildfire is gonna come in for five. And then I have one resource left over to break my boots and send this blazing, which is gonna take them down to six. I don't have enough resources to uh, pump this wildfire. Unfortunately, I drew, you know, uh, red. If I did have the blue, it would have. I would have been able to get him to two. But I'm pretty committed so far, so. I'm just thinking. We're gonna crack our boots and send this blazing. And the blazing is gonna come in for 14, I believe. So I get them down to six and I'm still at 30. Although I'm pretty naked now. I only have my Alluvian as AB1. So, and I have no cards in hand. So they could definitely punish me here. That was a very risky move, getting them down, but I did get them down to six. And uh, hopefully they just don't have the combo already as well. Because if they do, I'm fucked. Uh, but he canos into uh, a, blue, a blue zero and decides to throw that at me. So that definitely... Uh, I'm going to eat the prognosticate. So that definitely lets me know that he d doesn't have the combo. Because if he did, um, he would have wildfired, then prognosticate. But he is just looking to get that chip damage in. Came me down to 26. And he's... Yeah, he had a bunch of reds in hand. He's going to Tome. Draw some cards. And I'm just looking to AB some of this. And uh, probably hit him with his Swell Tidings. I'm sure they're sitting there doing math. Can they get... 26 damage in, which I don't think they can. They're playing Snapback, which is an amazing card in the mirror. I should be playing it, but I just don't have the space in my list right now. So let's just go ahead and Swell Tidings them, which is going to force a lot of blocks. They're, they're inclined to block two cards with this. Yeah, they, they, they blocked four, take one, and then I'm going to throw Waning Moon, keeping two resources. And unless they, they do go to three, which is quite a dangerous place to be. And the smart thing to do here would be just pass your turn, which they do. I'm going to Tome, gain a little bit of life, go up to 26 here. And then I got a, a lot of blues to try to find lethal. Uh, a Scalding Rain isn't what I want to see, but you know, I, it's going to force some cards out of their hand because it's coming in for two.
see a potion of deja vu, which I don't want to see right now. I want to see damage. Done with Fendals. Good. I'll draw some more cards. And we can't go into an eye. Yeah, we're gonna throw the spindle at them for four, which is gonna force two more cards out of their hand. I think they see the writing on the wall here because uh, I think they just decided to concede. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out, Wizards. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you uh, like the Kano Mirror, hate the Kano Mirror. I really like it. I think it's incredibly interesting and in intricate. Uh, you, there's several ways you can approach it. Um, and I hope you guys learned something today. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out, Wizards.